Hello and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to go over uh, Google stock predictions using linear regression. So I have another video similar to this topic, um, but it's a lot more detailed showing you how to do more of the data cleaning, the data visualization before doing the actual prediction of your stock prices. Um, so in this video, it's going to be a whole lot shorter. I am making this video again because I have been asked to do similar videos on this topic. So again, this video is going to be a whole lot shorter, but straight to the point, and, but with the same results. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to go ahead and go to my kernel, and I'm going to restart clear all output. So I'm in my Jupyter notebook, and I'm going to show you the first thing I did was I imported my libraries. I'm going to run that. Next thing I did is I loaded my CSV file from my file location. That's the next line of code here. So I'm calling it google.csv. That's what my data set is called. So whatever you called your data set, you'd have to type that in there exactly the way you named it. So if you're not sure how to upload a data, a CSV file into Jupyter Notebook, I have another video on that explaining how to do that. I will link that in the description below. So the next thing I did is I went ahead and wanted to view the uh, df.head of my data set. Just looking through my data set, making sure there's something that's not popping out that shouldn't be there. For example, like asterisks or, you know, weird things that sometimes show up in your data. <laughs> um, but it looks very much, date is a, a date, you know, and you can see all those other ones are, look pretty good. The next thing is my uh, data shape. So I'm going to run that. It shows you how many variables and columns are in your data. So my data set is very short, so it's not that long. Yours might be longer. So the next thing I do is I look for any uh, null values in my data. So it's that df dot is null, and then um, it shows that all my variables have zero null values. So looking good, went ahead and ran the next one for my data types. So looking at my dates, it's object, open, high, low, and close are floats, so on and so forth. So then next thing I look at is I'm going to run my um, variable close. So the close is the closing price at the end of the day for stock prices. So I want to see what that looks like on a plot. And the trend looks like it spikes up and then kind of does a zigzag and then it goes back down. Kind of just visualizing that variable there. So now we have a heat map. So I created my heat map to look at my correlations between my variables. So I'm going to zoom back out so you can kind of see that. So how to read a heat map? The color of each cell represents the strength and direction of the correlation. So the darker the colors indicate the stronger correlations. And also the, the number here, this number chart, not only the darker, but also the number closer to 1 or 1 is a stronger correlation between the variables. So a heat map can help us identify patterns and relationships between multiple variables. So if you have a data set that is, um, has a lot of variables and you want to see those correlations between each other, um, a heat map will be great to look at. So the next thing is I want to split the data for testing. So as you can see, my X I am doing the um, open, high, low volume values, and these are independent, um, my independent var variables. Oops, there we go. My independent variables, and my y um, axis is my dependent variables. So that's how I set that here using this line of code. 
So the next thing I do is I split the data 80% train and 20% testing. So the way I did that is if you put the size here to 0 0.2, you're basically saying I want 20% testing. So if you want 30%, you would change that to a 3, or 50%, you change that to a 5. It all depends. So if you put that to a 5, then the other 50% would be trained. So that's why it's 20% and then the remaining is 80%, right? So the 80% train. So I ran that. The next thing I do is I'm going to train the model for linear prediction. So this is the code I use here to train the model for linear prediction. So again, I'm going to use my libraries. And you need these for, for this code down here to work. So then I create my regression model by using that code here, calling it regression, regress, regressor. And then I'm going to fit my linear regression model, which I'm going to call it model. And then use model to make predictions, which I'm going to call it y underscore pre, preed. So predict pretty much, but just short term. So then I'm going to run that. Next thing I do is I do the prediction table of actual prices versus predicted values. So this is the fun part. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. This is my table here showing my actual prices and my predicted prices. So this is it's all predicting for me. So this is the code I used. And I'm going to just take a little bit just in case you want to look at that code. Zoom it in. And scrolling down, the next thing is I plot my predictions. So these prices here are now being plotted down here. And that's what it looks like. But again, I want to show you my code. I know that's important. So I'm going to zoom in, take a moment for you guys to look at my code, in case you guys want to try it yourselves. So this is what it looks like with my data set. So your data set might look a little different depending on how many variables and um, columns, rows you have. It's going to look different. So, And then now I do what I did at the end is I graphed the first 15 values. And this is what it looks like here. So I'm going to zoom in there to show you my code. So I did the graph, this is what I called it, dfr.head, and I'm doing the 15. So if I wanted to do 20, I'd put 20 there, control enter, and now there's the first 20. But I don't think my data has that many, so that's probably why I did the shorter, or even I should have done four. But either way, it goes as high as it can go. <laughs> So this is my bar graph, my line graph, showing all predictions, my table of all prediction values versus actual prices. So I hope this video helped you out. It's a lot shorter and it gets straight to the point, but shows you exactly how to use linear regression. So thank you for watching.